Ned, we'll change this to Whitebird, Idaho. We'll have the salmon or snake coming across yeah, here. That that salmon jumping up here. Some rattlesnakes wrapped around this. We'll have an eagle okay. and something yeah. else over Local here, but it will represent right over by Idaho. Oh, okay. White bird, Stuff Idaho, like to be yeah. specific. So I do you think you do the same colors? Well, blue, silver, white, probably oh, some green some and red for the fish and like for the green. eagle. But you have to stick with classic colors. All right, here's a theory, and just think of this theory. For example, the pyramids. It's all the, out in a big old, there's nothing there but the pyramids. But when they get inside them, they've got electric lines, they've got water lines, they had lighting, they had so many things. Okay, I think, and then down in South America, they find those big buildings in those cities. They have no idea what happened to those people or anything. And this is my theory, and I think it's true. I believe that we start, we, we keep building high tech. We keep going higher tech, higher tech, higher tech. Then pretty soon the machines take over and we get blowed to shit. A war happens. And all the people die except for maybe three or four, maybe a little community like this out in the middle of bumfuck Egypt, and they're like, well, we're not going to do that again. We're going to go right back to the black and white, and we're going to start gathering and harvesting, and we're not going to have all of these machines that'll kill us in the end. And I think that's what happens. I think it happens over and over and over. Well, I, to, to me, obviously, it's the history. Uh, you got the Indian War here. That was pretty cool. I'm just overwhelmed with the Battle of 1867 with the White Bird, the Indian, the cavalry, and the Indians up here, and then them, you know, Chief Joseph heading for Montana, and Howard going out. It's just there's a, just some awesome history. There's all kinds of there's all kinds of history around here. Like Chief Joseph, he was like one of the first renegade Indians that did a little uprising just up the road, actually, in my backyard, if you want to know the truth. They never did catch him. They had to give up. They were already in Canada. It was the last place a group of Indians stomped the cavalry real good. <laughs> then, of course, he got chased all the way to Canada almost and almost annihilated, but that's another story. Yeah, the cavalry came over and the Indians were just right up here about half a mile or a mile. Yeah, it just, just, it was so different. And then they went on down and they distracted the cavalry while they're, while the Nez Perce headed toward Montana. It was just, it, there's just so much good history here. Gerald Mackey. I work for the city of Whitebird as their, I run their sewer and water system. My great great grandparents settled here in the 1860s and so this was always a haven for me. Growing up in Southern California and in the island of Guam, we could come up here, we could swim in the rivers, we could swim in the creeks, uh, it was clean air. Well for me it's home. Um, 
you know, you, you, it, you get down here and it's it's so rugged. It's a different kind of rugged beauty and the river is there and, and, and I wake up every morning and I look at the Salmon River and it's like, it's like home, you know. It's like, why wouldn't you, why wouldn't you want to be here? Whitebird's home. It's, uh, you know, it's a place when you're here and you're around it, it kind of grows on you. I think it's a very, uh, it's very rural, but it's a very positive place to live. And I think that the people here care about others. I think it's a neat little town. Everybody knows everybody. A little too personal sometimes, but... Yeah, some people claim for it to be redneck. Some people claim for it to be small town, whatever. We came here on a short vacation and fell in love and came back because we love the people, we love the community, we love the, everything about it. Well, and the other side of it is, I, I was in the military, I've been all over the United States, I've been uh, around a lot, and there's no place like here. But I've been here for a couple years before, and I like this place. It's uh, it's cozy, and uh, and redneck as hell. <laughs> if you <don't> pay <laughs> <laughs> Small town, no people, less trouble, yeah. and cowboy shit. Would you describe this as a type of paradise? Oh, absolutely. There isn't many state parks that look nice in my backyard. and wildlife and world-class hunting and fishing and it's it's just I don't know I can't think of it. <laughs> you have to understand we're at the gateway between we're in, the, in what we call the Salmon River Valley and between Whitebird and Riggins is what we call the gateway to the Hell's Canyon area. Now Hell's Canyon is uh, the deepest canyon in the United States and that's why this place is so appealing to so many people come from all over the place, you know, to include Europe, you know, to come and see this canyon. And so that really tells you something, you know, it's very beautiful. It's beautiful. I mean, you go and, you know, I've been to Yellowstone. I mean, there's only a few national parks I've been to that I've been like, wow, this compares to where I live. We have the longest contiguous uh, uninterrupted, undammed river, I think, in North America, or at least the United States, in the salmon. It's just beautifully clean and clear. I was swimming in it yesterday, and I could literally look down 30 feet and see sand on the bottom 30 feet down in a river, in a flowing river. And this is at 6,000 cubic feet per second. salmon running the river, I mean, it's, it's like... It always attracts me back here because of, of we course... Went, we went beach hopping. The today. environment, <laughs> the beaches, the heat. I, mean, I got my own creek in my backyard, so I don't have to go far to get wet. Well, that's life, brother. The people are great. Can you uh, introduce yourself? Who are you, where are you from? Oh, I'm just one of them white birdians from Whitebird. Down the narrow-minded man from a narrow-minded kid and people. And we just hang out down here, you know. Shit rolls down the bottom and that's where we're at down here. <laughs> but what attracts people to Whitebird itself is totally unknown. <laughs> As residents, it's usually people that broke down on the highway. <laughs> on ways to someplace else, and I can give you a couple examples of that. My name's Richard, and I'm from Whitebird. I've been, been here about 25 years. I'm a mechanic body man. I'm a carpenter. Uh, I help build the roads. I do all kinds, jack of all trade, and that master, and that kind of deal. And I've worked on all everybody's houses around here. I've built several houses around here. 
from bikers to farmers to, you know, the, the local cowboy to just everybody. All kinds of different folks. Probably half to five-eighths of these people are related in some way, shape, or form. If you look at demographics, I think the average age is something like 57 or the mean age. And uh, the, uh, the primary income is probably disability and Social Security. There's a lot of people who look at this area and they're going to have a lot of uh, preconceived notions in, in, about rural Idaho. And some of them are looking like backwoods hillbillies. But, you know, they're all good people. And you don't see everybody, but you get to know, to know the people around here. There's a lot of really good people around here. You know, these people, most of these people here, you know, if you would go back in their lives, you would just be shocked where they come from, how intelligent they are, what they've done with their lives. And see that these people have a equal life here on this river. That's something they can understand. You're who you are. Whitebird doesn't try to hide anything from anybody. My main thing that I try every day is to do a good thing. I try to do good works so that I might go to heaven <laughs> if I'm lucky. <laughs> All the bad marbles fall to the bottom of the hill. <laughs> you ain't been around, bitch. Who's the fastest kid? It's all downhill. No. The winner's in the front. And I'm coming up second. Oh, yeah. White bird kids. Gotta love them. I am Ian Kernot. Um, I'm from White Bird. I've lived in the same house all my life. They, uh, our kids are outdoorsy. I like to catch, catch snakes. They swim the creek, they crawl the mountains, they go horn hunting. I like to hand fish too. God, that's where my kids all grew up, was up there. I played in the creek, you know, and they got to go deer hunting when they were 13 years old. They fished the creek when they were young, like this fellow sitting next to me, you know. I'm a country boy. My mom keeps on telling me I grew up in a barn. This is a beautiful place with nice, calm creeks and rivers. They're not open to all the gang fights and the and the riffraff and the, the, the gang wars and all this stuff. It's kind of nice when you can turn your kids loose with a bicycle and a fishing pole and you don't have to worry about them because everybody kind of knows what's going on. I mean, it's not a it's not a, a bad thing having those freedoms. It's a great place to grow up. Um, like, stay here. You don't. There's night. You can't hunt in the city. White Bird is the best place you could ever live because it's beautiful and there's a lot of stuff to do if you're smart. Sometimes I just pick up rocks and sticks and play with them. No, we don't have the laws that are elsewhere. Mostly down here in Whitebird, everybody takes care of themselves. The, the law doesn't get called down here too often. And they don't come down here too often. You know. There's that right there. Let's drive down the road on a side by side. Yeah. Totally legal here. <clears throat> and, you know, uh, you will never see a cop here. We don't have a sheriff or anything like that, but we do get one that'll pass through town occasionally. You know, here is just pretty much, you do what you want to do as long as you're not harming anybody else. And nobody cares. <laughs> and you notice, like on White Bird Days, did you see any cops here? No. The, the big sheriff was here, but he lived down at Skookumchuck, and he come in to party. And he was the only cop in town, you know, and that was it. They don't come in because we don't need them. And you know, when they used to come in, we had street fights and all kinds of problems like that. It seems like when you got a cluster of cops standing on the corner, it entices everybody to go crazy. 
there is not a liquor ordinance per se for the downtown area. You can go from one bar to the other with a drink. We don't have an open container law. You know, anywhere else you go in the state or anywhere, if you walk out of a bar with one of these, you're going to get a ticket. But not here. Now remember, the population is less than about 100. Okay? There's 48 single men here that drink on a daily basis that live right, you know, in town. So that's half of the population right there, see? And they, and they drink. You know, they all drink, we all drink, we all drink. Well, the Silver Dollar Saloon, I'm told, in uh, the Silver Dollar sells more Keystone Light sells more Keystone Light than any bar on the West Coast, from what I'm told, than anywhere in the Northwest. It sells more cases of Keystone than any other place in the whole nation. Yeah, they go through quite a bit of Keystones. You know, 75 people here, a low week would be like 250 cases. Today we brought 125 cases of just Keystone. This is the keystone capital of the whole United States. Keystone has told us this. When the beer truck shows up, and he drops off about four to five pallets worth out in the dirty street. We got an pal electric pallet jack to take it off the truck with and then down stack it and wheel it in. Although all these guys can drink every day, they starve because they don't have enough money to drink and eat. The people in my trailer court probably drink at least a case each a day and there's eight of them. So do they spend more money on beer or food? Did you just hear me? They're starving. They don't have any food in their houses because they spend all their money on alcohol. Yeah, yes, honey, we're just a bunch of drunks down here actually when you get right down the nitty gritty, but but we're functioning drunks. This is a drinking town with a fishing problem. There's an open container law. If you don't got one, you deserve to get a ticket. If you don't got a beer between your legs, the vehicle won't start. Oh yeah, you bet we own guns, but we're hunters. You know, we, we're gatherers. We, we kill our meat, you know, we, we need our guns. And it's all good jet, jet boating, world famous. Rafting. Rafting, hiking, boating. Hunting, fishing. In the springtime, we pick mushrooms and hunt horns. In the fall, it's hunting and gathering, you know, because we got berries, wild berries. A lot of hunters, a lot of fishermen, lots. Bicycles. We wouldn't believe how many bicycles go through this town. We all have guns. That's just life. But you know what? That even is prophesied that the saints will come out of the mountains and save the country because we're the ones with the guns. Do you, do you feel more free in Whitebird? Um, well, I, I've always felt pretty free, honey. I do what I want. That's another thing. I can hang out like this. I don't have to put my teeth in. I don't have to comb my hair. I don't have to put no makeup on. But if I go home, I would have to conform. I gotta stop drinking. I would have to go to church. I would have to comb my hair every day and wear my teeth and talk like a lady. I couldn't say fuck. Places like Whitebird are disappearing off of the face of the earth. Something else like the old days still. It hasn't been overcome with speed and techno. It's such a small community, and community is a key word here. When trouble comes, when, when something happens, this place, more than any other place I've ever seen, comes together as a community to help each other out. You know, we just like it here because it's we're just so free. The stress level's not as much. I like the part that the stress ain't so bad. I have less stress here, for sure. Oh, yeah. I walk down the street and everybody waves, you know? And, and you know, it's just, 
how can you not feel better about life when you have that many correspondents that are almost all positive? There's no place like here, you know, and here you, you go, you, when you go to other places, I always compare it to here. It's like, well, would I rather be here or there? And I, it always comes back to here. That's how that's done. It's the freedom of being here where nobody gives a shit, honey. It's a dying town, nobody gives a shit. You can sit on any paved road and it ends up dirt. This is Whitebird. This town's just kind of the Wild West still, a little bit. This is Whitebird. It's kind of a, like the past, but the present. This is Whitebird. Money don't mean shit to me. That's why I'm here. This is Whitebird. We're kind of the middle America. Well, this just plain is Whitebird. You know, heartbeat of America, so to speak, if you're a Chevy fan. This is Whitebird. Where else are you going to go where it's this nice? This is Whitebird. Whitebird. And I know if I got in trouble, Whitebird would be there for me. This is Whitebird. <laughs> I hope to stay here forever. You know, this place is just, I like it. Hey, slow down. Walk. Little town tucked away in a valley in Idaho. The bar is quaint, the water is clear. This is a white bird, man. And all of this white bird. Woo! Yeah. This is white bird. This is white bird. This is white bird. This is white bird. This is what is it? This is white bird. <laughs> the river's what brings folks to town. Every road. This is Whitebird. 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 Yes, this is Whitebird, Idaho. Our lives are centered on the ebb and flow. Follow the river where it wants to go. A little town tucked away in a valley in Idaho. This is Whitebird. This is Whitebird. This is Whitebird. And this is White Bird. This is White Bird. This is White Bird. This White Bird is the best tan ever. It's also going to be a movie. How many likes are you going to get? <laughs> Please, can you just say this is White Bird? This is a White Bird. <laughs>